Hello. In this video, I'm going to talk about the substitution reactions of alcohols uh, facilitated by the formation of sulfonate esters. Uh, and in case you don't know what a sulfonate ester is, let's just briefly uh, share what that might be. Um, the sulfonate ester uh, is an ester of an alcohol and uh, a sulfonic acid though we don't actually use sulfonic acids to get there. Uh, you'll see that in a minute. We sort of have uh, the general structure, uh, again, using, using ethanol as my alcohol, uh, of this, where, where the R group can vary, though um, some R groups are considerably more common uh, for a variety of factors. Uh, well, uh, so these things, uh, sorry for the pause there. I was trying to decide whether to draw a mechanism or to talk about the different R groups. And I'm going to go ahead and draw uh, a mechanism, and then we'll talk about what those different R groups can be. Uh, so the type of reaction that is used to uh, put these kinds of groups on uses a sulfonyl chloride. So it has all of the sulfur things uh, that are over there. And where it's going to be connected to the alcohol is a chloride or a chlorine atom. And in my mechanism, I'll draw the structure of that. And some sort of appropriate base, usually amine bases, are used like triethylamine or pyridine. I'm going to, I'm going to use triethylamine here. <clears throat> so, um, the, and the purpose of the triethylamine is to absorb any of the acid that might form from this reaction. So like the, the other product here is triethylamine or triethylammonium chloride. So the, the reaction produces hydrogen chloride. Uh, and so, oops, lowercase t and ethyl. Feels awkward. Okay, there we go. Oh, and then, then of course now, there we are lowercase t and ethyl triethyl ammonium chloride. Um, and so the, the hydrochloric acid can't cause other troubles down the line. So let's draw uh, out my sulfonyl chloride. Sulfur. Um, they're actually two different ways that one could draw this mechanism. Uh, I'm going to draw both of them for you so that, that you have both of them at your fingertips. Um, some folks will want to draw a, a mechanism that looks like an addition elimination se uh, sequence. This is a little bit more in line with the types of substitution mechanisms we draw on carbonyl compounds. And uh, these sulfonyl compounds are actually pretty the similar or sulfur analogs kind of, of carbonyl compounds. And so you, you have nucleophilic attack at sulfur, carbon oxygen double bond breaks, you get it. Chlorine in here somewhere, so there's like a lot of stuff crammed around the sulfur, uh, and, and sulfur is one of those atoms in general chemistry that you talk about being able to extend, extend its octet, uh, though, though to what degree you buy that as, as a legitimate quantum mechanical explanation can, can be debated later. Uh, and so I have one, two, three, four, like six bonds to the sulfur. And um, then loss of leaving group happens second. So, so yeah. this kind of addition elimination mechanism involves nucleophilic attack as the first step. Loss of leaving group is the second step. And again, that is really very similar to the uh, substitution mechanisms on carboxylic acids, esters, and, and other sorts of things. Uh, let's see, sulfur, oxygen, oxygen, R group, eventually. Uh, and 
now we have this extra proton still hanging out on the oxygen. And here is where our triethyl amine comes in. It is the, uh, of all of the things in the reaction, the strongest base, so it can take away this extra proton. And now we get, as the outcome, I'm not going to be able to fit it there. So let's change my orientation just a little bit. There we go. And there we have, have our sulfonate ester triethylamine. Um, I have also seen stuff that I would be like SN2, like at the sulfur. Um, I'm just going to draw what that first step might look like because once that first step you get to an intermediate that's that's in the previous mechanism. Uh, yeah, so what this looks like actually is instead of uh, after when the nucleophilic attack occurs, one of the carbon oxygen pi bonds break. The, the idea is here is that yeah, this is not necessarily what a what a proper SN2 substrate might look like, but you know, sulfur is pretty large. Well, there's a bunch of stuff there. It's uh, there's actually more room to get in around things than you might expect. It's got a good leaving group, uh, and so so some folks will draw an SN2 like process at sulfur. Uh, either way, uh, I would pay attention to what your textbook and, and your instructor prefer and match them. But I wanted to present both mechanisms. Okay. The benefit of these sulfonate esters now is that this thing that we have put on here is a good leaving group. I want to draw a box around it. I don't want to select it for a box. This thing is now a good leaving group. It's the, the conjugate base of a strong acid. So it is a good leaving group, uh, regardless, honestly, of what R is. <clears throat> and so we can do all kinds of substitution reactions with it. Um, also, uh, these sulfonate esters can be isolated and purified, and they're, uh, they can be stored uh, stable for a long time. But, you know, if we, if we treat this with an appropriate nucleophile in SN2-like conditions, so polar aprotic solvent, we are going to get the corresponding uh, substitution reaction. And here's our leaving group. Um, and so, our, you know, this is resonance stabilized. The, the conjugate acid of this thing is a strong acid. pKa is in the, the th negative threes. So good leaving group here. Uh, one more example on a secondary substrate. And I'm just going to do really simple. Duh. It's like 2-methyl two, two or 2 nah, 3-methyl to butanol. We have a chirality center here. So if we put on an RSO2Cl triethylamine, format those so they behave correctly, and then follow that up with uh, sodium chloride. And I am Again, my, my focus here is on the, it's a different solvent. My, my focus here is on the uh, conversion to halides, but honestly, any nucleophile that is capable of functioning in an SN2 reaction will behave itself here. And uh, because we're doing SN2-like conditions, we get inversion of stereochemistry and we avoid rearrangements. So let me finish off the video by just talking about some what these R what these R can be in sulfonate esters. And I said that there's actually a lot of flexibility, um, but common ones are methyl, and so we have uh, you know we have we have alcohols that have this O S O two M E hanging off of them, and it gets abbreviated as OMS, and I just lost my formatting. <clears throat> the, the full name of that is the, the methyl sulfonate 
ester or mestral sulfonyl group, and so it gets translated or shortened. Me for methyl, Sy for sulfonyl, and then this mesyl eight eight signifying we've got an anion when it when it leaves, or or eight is also a suffix that can indicate we have an ester. Um, and so this is really pretty common. Uh, we can also have uh, the toluol, toluene, toluol, or 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 toluene, toluene sulfonyl, which then gets translated into the tazil or tazilate ester. Um, and then what that looks like, and I'm I'm not gonna. Actually, I'm not going to to abbreviate it because it's got a bunch of stuff going on here. Is this? We have our toluene sulfonate, uh, and then that's abbreviated. All of this stuff is abbreviated uh, when it's tacked onto a molecule as OTS, uh, and I certainly want that abbreviation. And then one final one that uh, you will sometimes see is the trifluoromethyl. Or, or um, you know, so that, that's like CF3SO2, um, which will be then uh, CF3SO2. And we call this thing the triflate methane sulfonyl, or, or, whoa. The triflate. Seriously? What are you doing? The triflate, uh, and, and it's abbreviated as OTF when it's stuck on a molecule. Three. Sulfur, everyone really does not want me to draw these sulfur oxygen and double bonds, but here's what the, the triflate uh, thing looks like. So these sulfonate esters give a really powerful ability for, um, actually I really just do not like the way this one looks, sorry. I'm fixing my tosylate group, that, that looks friendlier to me. These uh, sulfonate esters provide a really powerful way to convert alcohols into leaving groups uh, and then being able to do a subsequent reaction. In the next couple of videos, I'll share ways in which all of this can be done in one reaction. Uh, most of these methods are limited to conversion to halides, though the very last one is more general and can be used with other kinds of nucleophiles. Thank you for watching.